Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the ASUS ZenBook Dual UX8406, which is a laptop with two 14-inch OLED displays. And the other OLED display is beneath this wireless Bluetooth keyboard, which is removable. So once you remove that, the second display will power on automatically. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from ASUS Singapore. And in this video, I'll just present to you my findings so that you can decide whether this is worth the money. And the price of this laptop here in Singapore starts at 2,999 Singapore dollars for the model with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD storage. And you can configure this with 32 gigs of RAM, which will bring the price up to 3,399 Singapore dollars. Now my review will be from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who does graphic design, photo and video editing. And since this laptop also comes with the ASUS Pen 2, I will show you the pen performance as well. All right, let me give you the bottom line up front. This design is beautiful and functional and you just cannot beat dual display productivity with just a single display. The OLED displays are bright and vibrant. The overall performance is smooth and lag-free. Now this is a powerful laptop with the only limitation being when it comes to playing graphics intensive games, um, uh, it's not going to do so well. But for light gaming, it's fine. For visual content creation, I would say it's um, pretty fantastic uh, depending on whether you can make full use of uh, both displays. The keyboard is much better than I expected. The typing experience is really good and the port selection um, it's okay. Uh, one USB-A, two USB-C, Thunderbolt and one full-size HDMI. Battery life is, I would say, decent enough. Now, if you have two displays on and you're working, uh, battery life is probably around five to six hours on the lower side, probably around five hours. If you're just using a single display, um, battery life is eight to 10 hours. Build quality is solid. This is just a really well-made laptop. Oh, another downside is since the speakers are facing away from you, facing down or facing away when you prop this up, the audio is loud but can sound slightly hollow. So that's the bottom line. Let's look at the items included in the box besides the laptop. There is this 65 watt USB-C power adapter with a separate power cable. Of course, the plug will vary depending on your country. And there is this pen. This is the ASUS Pen Gen 2, model number SA203H. And this comes with a built-in battery that you have to charge with this hidden USB-C port behind. This pen has two side buttons. And this pen uses MPP2. So this pen supports palm rejection, tilt, and slightly over 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Depending on your country or region, there may be a laptop bag included. And now let's look at the design of this 14-inch laptop, which I think looks quite beautiful. It is thicker than most 14-inch laptops nowadays though. And that is because there are two displays and the computing components are built into the second display. And there is the removable Bluetooth keyboard in between. Now the weight of this laptop is 1.7 kg with the keyboard and the keyboard weighs around 300 grams. The ports on the left are USB type A 3.2, two USB type C Thunderbolt 4, and this is the fan exhaust. And here, this is the USB-C port for charging the keyboard and the Bluetooth on off switch for the keyboard. On the right side of the laptop, there is another fan exhaust, a 3.5mm audio jack, and a full-size HDMI port version 2.1. The display cover is matte textured, and this is quite resistant to fingerprints, and there is the subtle ASUS logo. On the back, there are two big rubber feet, and this is the built-in kickstand. So when you open this all the way up, you can see this. This is not the cover for the SSD. 
If you want to upgrade the SSD, you have to remove the two screws here and the eight screws on the back plate. So it's quite a process. Now the hinge is quite stiff and strong. Deploying the stand is really easy. Just lift the laptop, pull the stand all the way to the back and this is the maximum extent that the stand can go. And if you want to prop up the display more vertically, you can do this and the rubber feet here and the two here beneath the display, they have good friction so this is not going to move or sink lower. Once this is up, you can just pull up the display and you can see that this is really glossy so ASUS should have included some anti-glare reflective coating on this and also on the bottom display. Face unlock works quite effectively and fast. To remove the keyboard, you just lift it off from the left or right and the keyboard is held in place with magnets. So once you remove this, the second screen will come on automatically. And notice the POGO pin connector at the bottom and there is the connector at the bottom as well. The magnets cannot be seen on the back and this bag is quite susceptible to fingerprints for some reason. And this is rubberized bag so this will not scratch the display. So when you put this back on, it will snap back into place very easily and the second screen will turn off automatically. This Bluetooth keyboard is full size, backlit, comes with a large trackpad that is accurate and sensitive. The click is firm and this is a physical click, not haptic. The function key can be locked so that you can use the keys from the first row as F1 to F12. Key travel is 1.4 mm and the uh, typing experience is really good. Typing experience is similar to a laptop with a good keyboard. By the way, the power button is here. So this is the virtual keyboard on the second display and it's usable but the experience is not good because there is no physical key travel and this is the touchpad. It is possible to reduce the size of this keyboard. Just hit the option here and choose half screen keyboard. And now you have this smaller keyboard and you can place windows here. Uh, let me show you how you can do that. You can actually drag one of the windows from the top screen and down over to the second screen, just like this. And again, there are some software features for rearranging windows. So let me just place this window on the left side. And ASUS will automatically resize this for you. So this is actually quite useful, quite convenient. Let's talk about the two 14 inch OLED displays and they have identical performance and quality. So the resolution is 2880 by 1800, aspect ratio is 16 by 10. So for that resolution on a 14 inch display, pixelation is not noticeable from one arm's distance away. The refresh rate is 120 Hertz. You can actually set the refresh rate specifically for each panel. And there is the option to set the refresh rate higher or lower automatically depending on whether the laptop is connected to power. So right now these two displays are actually running at 60 Hertz. If I connect power to the laptop, the screen will black out for a split second and switch to 120 Hertz. Or you can choose to run these two displays at 120 Hertz all the time, but of course that will affect battery life. Both displays support touch. Now one thing about OLED displays is there is pulse wave modulation and people with sensitive eyes may notice flickering or their eyes may get tired more easily. Personally for me, I don't see any flicker and there may be some flicker for video clips in this review and that's due to my camera settings. These two displays are bright and the colors are vibrant and since they are OLED displays, the contrast is excellent. You get one to one million contrast and the blacks are just black. Let me just switch the window down to the bottom display 
So there are some shortcuts that you can use to um, utilize the two displays. And the viewing angles for both displays is pretty good. So even though the lower display is inclined at an angle um, due to the viewing angle, the colors will still match across the two displays. And I have actually color calibrated the two displays and I measured color support for 100% sRGB, DCI-P3, 92% Adobe RGB and 90% NTSC. So the color accuracy for these two displays is pretty good. Maximum brightness is 341 nits from what I have measured. So this is not as bright compared to some LCD displays, but due to the extra contrast ratio, um, you will get that illusion of brightness. 341 nits is sufficient for use in a bright room environment. Now one thing I don't quite like about the displays is they are really glossy and reflective so if there is any light source on the display you can see the reflection is really bright. I wish Asus could have you know included some anti-reflective coating because when I'm working uh, because of the reflection I can see my face all the time. In addition to the top-down design, you can also rotate the displays for a left and right uh, layout. Whether you prefer the top and bottom or left and right arrangement will come down to the type of work you do and also personal preference. For example, with a side-by-side -side layout, both displays are vertical and this can be great for writing. For example, if I'm doing some research on places I want to visit in South Korea, I can have my search results here on the screen. And on the left side, I can have my Word document open. And because it's a Word document, it would be better to present the page vertically so that I can see more lines. And now I want to talk about workflow for visual content creation. So let's have the top-down um, arrangement. Let's talk about photo editing and the app I'm using is Adobe Lightroom. So let me just uh, make this big. So moving through the thumbnails is quite fast and photo editing experience is fantastic because these two displays are color accurate and bright so everything looks really nice and the resolution is sharp so you can see a lot of details so the photo editing process is very satisfactory now i'm going to press f11 so that i can see the photo in the other display but for some reason it doesn't work so let me just exit let me move this display out. Oh, let me just show you something that um, we can do with the keyboard. So you can press this shortcut and this will switch the app down. Move the app down. So now I press F11 and see what happens. Okay, so now the photo is up there. So I can move through the thumbnails and I can see the photos um, big up there. Now if I double click to go in um, you can see that right now it's not that useful because this photo is also quite big and if I do any edits uh, let me just press the shortcut here yeah I can see the edits update uh, pretty fast so this is very responsive for photo editing but um, in this case, the dual display is not that uh, useful because this photo is big enough. Uh, in grid mode, um, this is more useful because uh, you are seeing two types of content. You are seeing the grid layout with all the information and you are seeing the large image. Whereas if you go in, um, these two uh, the sizes for these two photos is pretty similar. So whether or not you will benefit from dual display really comes down to the type of work you do and also whether the software you're using actually can make use of the second display. Let's look at graphic design. So this app is Adobe InDesign, which is used for laying out pages. Um, 
What I'm talking about here can apply to Adobe Illustrator as well. Personally for me, a 14 inch display is on the smaller side for graphic design. I would personally prefer doing graphic design work on a 15 inch or 16 inch laptop, but that would mean the laptop will be bigger and heavier. And also I would prefer of course to connect the laptop to an external display. For graphic design work, I find that I usually just have the app on one display and for the other display I usually use it to check emails or play some music or have a file browser open uh, like this. Let me just uh, show this. Okay, let me move this down again using the shortcut. Uh, one issue with the shortcut is uh, it will move all the apps down. You can't just move that window because right now this window is open and InDesign is also open. Let me move this up again. Okay, so there are two windows open. So if I want to move, um, let's say, just InDesign down, Notice there is a word file here. If I press this button here, it will move everything down. So you cannot just choose to move the active app down. So that's uh, one uh, downside or limitation. But you can use the Windows shortcut keys to move the apps around, or just Windows and use the arrows to move around. So that is uh, one uh, quick way you can do so by moving windows around. Um, notice the layout here. Now ASUS has actually included some software features through their own uh, ASUS app to help with arrangement of the apps. So if I move this window around, uh, you can see there is this pop-up that appears. So if I move this around, you can see that I can move this to the screen at the top, screen one. And if I move it down here to the little um, area here, I can place this window into one of the four squares here, uh, into one of the two squares here for a side-by-side -side layout on the first screen or a top-down layout on the first screen. So let me just uh, put this here at the top left on the first screen at the top. So you can use that shortcut to place windows um, in whichever location you prefer. Um, as my word file. Okay, so for the word file, let's say I want to drag this file down using my finger. Um, let's just do that and see what happens. There is a gap between the two displays, obviously, but for some reason, um, you can actually sort of drag the app, you know, the window from uh, one screen to the other. So right now, um, I have this word file from the bottom screen and let's drag it up to the first display. Doesn't work. It only works when this app is up. Here, okay, so let's take a look again. So I can do this, I can drag from top to down, but I can't drag from uh, bottom to up. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because uh, when you have this app up here, when you move the window, those uh, shortcuts for placing the window precisely will appear. So this software for moving the windows around, for arranging the windows, is incredibly convenient. I have used several ASUS ZenBook laptops before and it is this software for moving the windows around that makes the workflow very productive. Let's talk about video editing. I'm using DaVinci Resolve here, 18.6. Um, so let me just import all these clips. This is 4K 25 FPS uh, clips. So it's going to take some time to import and some time to generate the thumbnails. After you import the video clips, the fans will wrap up and the mouse movement will become choppy and also the app will very often freeze. And now the app is 
active so there is some setup time that you have to wait through after you import the clips so this is playback for 4k 25 fps clips and the playback is smooth let me switch over to the edit page um, I can see the thumbnail loading but it's quite fast so this will take some time to load and let me play this as well okay the playback is smooth let's go to workspace dual screen enable so for DaVinci Resolve um, you can utilize both displays to show different uh, tools so right now I have the timeline and the viewer here I have the clips and other the mixer and the other tools up there so let me go into workspace um, dual display and set full screen timeline and right now I have the timeline here so if you are working on multi-layered timelines then this is probably the uh, workspace you want you want to show uh, more of the timeline and the uh, bin the clips and all the metadata and the viewer will be up there so how the workspace is arranged or where the tools or palettes are really comes down to which app you are using and this is 4k 50 fps i'm just moving my hands around to see whether or not there are any drop frames and playback seems to be smooth gaming is possible now the intel arc graphics is quite decent um, but there will be limitations right now I'm running the game at uh, 1080p plus resolution and I can only get around what 25 frames per second so if you want something smoother if you want the frame rate to be higher you will have to drop the resolution down to maybe 720p plus and also when playing the fans uh, will ref the fan noise is not loud so that's great uh, but the main thing here is the gameplay is kind of choppy if you play games that don't require too much graphic resources then um, yeah sure um, gameplay can be smoother but for uh, graphics intensive games like this um, the experience is not good this laptop is obviously not a gaming laptop if you want to play games you can go with other asus laptops that are made for gaming so this laptop is available with either the intel core ultra 7 processor 155h uh, 1.4 gigahertz or the intel core ultra 9 processor 185h 2.5 sorry 2.3 gigahertz which is the processor in this particular review unit those processors have 16 cores each and they are powerful processors so for the past two weeks that I have been using this laptop uh, my experience is very positive um, the workflow is smooth there is no lag whatsoever except when playing well uh, graphics intensive games and this laptop has 32 gigs of RAM which is good uh, for multitasking or if you work with huge files um, that's great otherwise 16 gigs is probably sufficient ASUS usually includes some software to customize the laptop so let's just talk about some of the features that are available there is battery care mode where you can choose to have the laptop charged to 80% you can choose different performance mode like uh, performance mode, standard mode and whisper mode and you can um, change the settings for the AI noise cancelling mic you can adjust the refresh rate of the displays and there are some OLED uh, customization, color customization. Um, there is a lot. So this is a pretty long list. Let's look at the pen performance and talk about the drawing experience. So it makes more sense to draw on the bottom display since there is no support for the top display. And this is the lowest angle for the stand, which is about 45 degrees. I think this is still okay for drawing. The display is laminated, so when drawing, there is 
no gap between the line and the pen tip. This pen has palm rejection, so if you use your finger to write or draw or place your palm on the display, there will be no stray strokes. But if you use your pen to write and draw, it works. For this app, Sketchbook Pro, I cannot use two fingers to undo, so I have to use this button to undo. And notice as I tap on the display, there is the tapping sound. So this is a hard plastic tip, so it will make that tapping sound. And this tip is quite smooth on the display, so it will take some time to get used to uh, how smooth this is. There is pressure, so this is drawn with minimal pressure, and this is drawn with pressure, and there is tilt. Let's test for initial activation force, and this is how thick the line really is. And now I'm drawing with minimal pressure. Initial activation force is low. And as you can see for these diagonal lines, there is slight jitter and wobble. So this will affect accuracy. Let's see how lines taper. Performance is not consistent, so sometimes the lines taper um, smoothly, sometimes it's abrupt, sometimes it tapers with a tail. This app is Medibank Paint Pro and you can see the lines, they don't taper smoothly and sharply. Line transition from thin to thick and back to thin. So this is good, but this is also a diagonal line and you can see the diagonal line wobble or jitter. This is Photoshop, same thing. The line does not taper consistently. For drawing, it's actually quite nice to have a second display so that you can show some uh, reference, which is very useful. Uh, but as you can see, the drawing performance is not uh, that great due to the diagonal line wobble or jitter, which is actually quite common with digital styluses for Windows tablets and also for some Android tablets. Uh, you can use this to draw, but um, accuracy will be affected. And also um, the drawing experience, I think it's okay, it's just um, you have to get used to drawing on a glossy, uh, smooth display. I don't think this laptop or pen is good enough for creating professional hand-drawn illustration. For note-taking, it works fine. Functionality for the side buttons and whether you can customize them will depend on the app you use. So for this app concepts, I can use this button here, which is actually the right click. I have customized it to select, so I can select things, delete, select, delete. And this button here cannot be customized. And for this app, um, it actually will erase. Battery capacity for this laptop is 75 watt hours and uh, battery life can vary significantly depending on whether you're using one or two displays the brightness and what you are doing. So if you are using both displays and you are doing work where the fans wrap up, then battery life may be around four to five hours. If you are just um, doing web browsing, uh, typing some documents, maybe um, five to six hours with two displays. If you are just using one display, then maybe uh, we can get around eight to 10 hours. So I would say the battery life is quite decent. So I've been using this laptop for almost four hours now for recording this review and it dropped 50%. And I actually connected this uh, at this time to power because I was gaming. Uh, but other than that, um, I can usually get around eight to 10 hours um, with this laptop with a single display. If I'm using two displays, I will most likely connect the laptop to power source. To conclude, this laptop has a beautiful and functional design. It's quite well made. 
battery life is decent and it's quite powerful as to whether i can recommend this well i would suggest you look at the current software you're using and decide whether having an additional display can improve your workflow or productivity now if you have been using your computer and your computer is always connected to an external display or if you do not have an external display but you always wish to get one well oh, this laptop has two displays as mentioned earlier in the video it's very difficult to beat dual display productivity with just one display all right if you guys have any other questions let me know in the comment section below and if you are interested to buy this laptop consider using the affiliate links that i have for you in the video description below to help support my youtube channel so that i can put out more reviews like the one you have just watched see you guys in the next video bye